Epistle to the Rev. J. B., whilst journeying for the recovery of his health. Of Cottage Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte. Epistle to the Rev. J. B., whilst journeying for the recovery of his health. When warmed with zeal, my rustic muse feels fluttering fain to tell her news, and paint her simple lowly views with all her art, and though ingenious but obtuse, may touch the heart. Of palaces and courts of kings, she thinks but little, never sings, but wildly strikes her uncouth strings in some cool cot, spreads o'er the poor hen fostering wings and soothes their lot well pleased is she to see them smile and uses every honest while to mend their hearts their cares beguile with rhyming story and lead them to their god the while an endless glory perchance my poor neglected muse unfit to harass or amuse escaping praise and loud abuse unheard unknown may feed the moths and wasting dews as some have done her aims are good howe'er they end here comes a foe and there a friend these point the dart and those defend while some deride her but god will sweetest comforts blend whate'er betide her thus heaven supported forth she goes midst flatterers critics friends and foes secure since he who all things knows approves her aim and kindly fans or fostering blows her sinking flame hence when she shows her honest face and tells her tale with awkward grace importunate to gain a place amongst your friends to ruthless critics leave her case and hail her ends to all my heart is kind and true but glows with ardent love for you though absent still you rise in view and talk and smile whilst heavenly themes for ever new our cares beguile the happy seasons oft return when love our melting hearts did burn as we through heavenly themes were born with heavenward eyes and faith this empty globe would spurn and sail the skies or when the rising sun shines bright or setting leaves the world in night or dazzling sheds his noonday light or cloudy hides my fancy in her airy flight with you resides where far you wander down the vale when balmy scents perfume the gale with purling rills and linnets hail the king of kings to muse with you i never fail on heavenly things where dashing cataracts astound and foaming shake the neighboring ground and spread a hoary mist around with you i gaze and think amidst the deafening sound on wisdom's ways where rocky mountains prop the skies and round the smiling landscape lies whilst you look down with tearful eyes on groveling man my sympathetic fancy flies the scene to scan from pisgah's top we then survey the blissful realms of endless day and all the short but narrow way that lies between whilst faith emits a heavenly ray and cheers the scene with you i wander on the shore to hear the angry surges roar whilst foaming through the sands they pour with constant roll and meditations heavenward soar and charm the soul on life's rough sea we're tempest driven in crazy barks our canvas riven such is the lot to mortals given where sins resort but he whose anchor's fixed in heaven shall gain the port though swelling waves oft beat him back and tempests make him half a wreck and passions strong with dangerous tack retard his course yet christ the pilot all will check and quell their force so talk we as we thoughtful stray along the coast where dashing spray with rising mist o'erhangs the day and wets the shore and thick the vivid flashes play 
and thunders roar whilst passing o'er this giddy stage a pious and learned sage resolved the eternal war to wage with passions fell how oft you view with holy rage these imps of hell see with what maddening forces they sway the human breast and lead astray down the steep broad destructive way the giddy throng till grisly death sweeps all away the fiends among as when the mad tornado flies and sounding mingles earth and skies and wild confusion for the eyes in terrors dressed so passions fell in whirlwinds rise and rend the breast but whilst this direful tempest raves and many barks are dashed to staves i see you tower above the waves like some tall rock whose base the harmless ocean laves without a shock tis he who calmed the raging sea who bids the waves be still in thee and keeps you from all dangers free amidst the wreck all sin and care and dangers flee e'en at his beck and on that great and dreadful day when heaven and earth shall pass away each soul to bliss he will convey that knows his name and give the giddy world a prey to quenchless flame so oft when the sabbaths bade us rest and heavenly zeal inspired your breast obedient to the high behest you preached to all whilst god your zealous efforts blessed and owned your call the very thought my soul inspires and kindles bright her latent fires my muse fills heart-warm fond desires and spreads her wing and aims to join the angelic choirs and sweetly sing may rosy health with speed return and all your wonted ardor burn and sickness buried in his urn sleep many years so countless friends who loudly mourn shall dry their tears your wailing flock will all rejoice to hear their much-loved shepherd's voice and long will bless the happy choice their hearts have made and tuneful mirth will swell the noise through grove and glade your dearer half will join with me to celebrate the jubilee and praise the great eternal three with throbbing joy and taste those pleasures pure and free which never cloy End of poem. The Happy Cottagers of Cottage Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by J. L. Baldwin. Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte. The Happy Cottagers. One sunny morn of May, when dressed in flowery green, the dewy landscape charmed with nature's fairest scene, in thoughtful mood I slowly strayed o'er hill and dale through bush and glade. Throughout the cloudless sky of light unsullied blue, the larks or matins raised, whilst on my dizzy view, like dusky motes they winged their way, till vanished in the blaze of day. The linnets sweetly sang on every fragrant thorn, whilst from the tangled wood the blackbirds hailed the morn and through the dew ran here and there but half afraid the startled hare the balmy breeze just kissed the countless dewy gems which decked the yielding blade or gilt the sturdy stems and gently o'er the charmed sight a deluge shed of trembling light a sympathetic glow ran through my melting soul and calm and sweet delight o'er all my senses stole and through my heart a grateful flood of joy rolled on to nature's god time flew unheeded by till wearied and oppressed upon a flowery bank i laid me down to rest beneath my feet a purling stream ran glittering in the noontide beam i turned me round to view the lovely rural scene and just at hand i spied a cottage on the green the street was clean the walls were white the thatch was neat the window bright Bold Chanticleer, arrayed in velvet plumage gay, with many an amorous dame fierce strutted o'er the way, and motley ducks were waddling seen, and drake with neck of glossy green. The latch I gently raised, and oped the humble door, 
An oaken stool was placed on the neat sanded floor. An aged man said with a smile, You're welcome, sir. Come rest a while. His coarse attire was clean, his manner rude yet kind. His air, his words, and looks showed a contented mind. Though mean and poor, thrice happy he, as by our tale you soon shall see. But don't expect to hear of deeds of martial fame, or that our peasant mean was born of rank or name, and soon will strut as in romance, a knight and all in armor glance. I sing of real life, all else is empty show, to those who read a source of much unreal woe. Pollution, too, through novel veins, oft fills the mind with guilty stains. Our peasant long was bred affliction's meager child, yet gratefully resigned, loud hymning praises smiled, and like a tower he stood unmoved, supported by the God he loved. His loving wife long since was numbered with the dead, his son, a martial youth, had for his country bled, and now remained one daughter fair, and only she to soothe his care. The aged man with tears spoke of the lovely maid, how earnestly she strove to lend her father aid, and as he ran her praises o'er, she gently oped the cottage door. With vegetable store the table soon she spread, and pressed me to partake, whilst blushes rosy red suffused her face, the old man smiled, well pleased to see his darling child. With venerable air he then looked up to God, a blessing craved on all and on our daily food then kindly begged I would excuse their humble fare and not refuse. The tablecloth, though coarse, was of a snowy white. The vessels, spoons, and knives were clean and dazzling bright. So down we sat, devoid of care, nor envied kings their dainty fare. When nature was refreshed and we familiar grown, the good old man exclaimed, Around Jehovah's throne, come, let us all our voices raise and sing our great Redeemer's praise. Their artless notes were sweet, grace ran through every line, their breasts with rapture swelled, their looks were all divine. Delight o'er all my senses stole, and heaven's pure joy o'erwhelmed my soul. When we had praised our God and knelt around his throne, the aged man began in deep and zealous tone, with hands upraised in heavenward eye, and prayed loud and fervently. He prayed that for his sake, whose guiltless blood was shed for guilty ruined man, we might that day be fed with that pure bread which cheers the soul, and living stream where pleasures roll. He prayed long for all, and for his daughter dear, that she, preserved from ill, might lead for many a year a spotless life when he's no more, then follow him to Canaan's shore. His faltering voice then fell, his tears were dropping fast, and muttering praise to God for all his mercies past, he closed his prayer midst heavenly joys, and tasted bliss which never cloys. In sweet discourse we spent the fast declining day, we spoke of Jesus' love, and of that narrow way, which leads through care and toil below, to streams where joys eternal flow. The wondrous plan of grace, adoring, we surveyed, the birth of heavenly skill in love eternal laid, too deep for clear angelic ken, and far beyond dim-sighted men. To tell you all that passed would far exceed my power. Suffice it then to say, joy winged the passing hour, till, ere we knew, the setting day had clad the world in silver gray. I kindly took my leave, and blessed the happy lot of those I left behind lodged in their humble cot, and pitied some in palace walls where pride torments and pleasure palls. The silver moon now shed a flood of trembling light on tower and tree and stream, the twinkling stars shone bright nor misty stain, nor cloud was seen, o'er all the deep celestial green. Mild was the lovely night, nor stirred a whispering breeze, smooth was the glassy lake, and still the leafy trees. No sound in air was heard afloat, save Philomel's sweet warbling note. My thoughts were on the wing, and back my fancy fled, to where contentment dwelt in the neat humble shed. To shining courts from thence it ran, where restless pride oppresses man. In fame some search for bliss, some seek content in gain. In search of happiness, some give the slackened rein to passions fierce, and down the stream through giddy life of pleasure's dream. These all mistake the way, as many more have done. The narrow path of bliss through God's eternal Son directly tends, and only he who treads this path can happy be. 
who anchors all above has still a happy lot, though doomed for life to dwell e'en in a humble cot, and when he lays this covering down, he'll wear a bright immortal crown. End of The Happy Cottagers This poem is in the public domain. The Rainbow from Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte Read for LibriVox.org by Amy Graymore Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte The Rainbow The shower is past and the sky, or head is both mild and serene, save where a few drops from on high, like gems twinkle over the green, and glowing fair in the black north, the rainbow o'er arches the cloud, the sun in his glory comes forth, and larks sweetly warble aloud. That dismally grim northern sky, says God in his vengeance once frowned, and opened his floodgates on high, till obstinate sinners were drowned. The lively bright south and that bow, say all this dread vengeance is o'er. These colors that smilingly glow, say we shall be deluged no more. Ever blessed be those innocent days, ever sweet their remembrance to me, when often in silent amaze, enraptured I'd gaze upon thee. Whilst arching adown the black sky, thy colors glowed on the green hill, to catch thee as lightning I'd fly, but I, you eluded my skill. From hill unto hill your gay scene, you shifted whilst crying aloud, I ran till at length from the green, you shifted at once to the cloud. So vain worldly phantoms betray the youths who too eager pursue, when ruined and far led astray, delusion escapes from their view. Those peaceable days knew no care, except what arose from my play, my favorite lambkin and hare, and cabin I built o'er the way. No cares, did I say? Ah, I'm wrong. Even childhood from cares is not free. Far distant I see a grim throng shake horrible lances at me. One day I remember it still, for pranks I had played on the clown who lived on the neighboring hill. My cabin was trod to the ground. Who ever felt grief such as I, when crashed by this terrible blow? Not Priam the monarch of Troy, when all his proud towers lay low. And grief upon grief was my lot, Soon after my lambkin was slain, my hare, having strayed from its cot, was chased by the hounds o'er the plain. What countless calamities teem from memory's page on my view! How trifling so e'er you seem! Yet once I have wept over you. Then cease, foolish heart, to repine. No stage is exempted from care. If you would true happiness find, come follow, and I'll show you where. But first let us take for our guide the word which Jehovah has penned. By this the true path is descried, which leads to a glorious end. How narrow this path to our view, how steep an ascent lies before, whilst foolish fond heart laid for you are dazzling temptations all o'er. What byways with easy descent invite us through pleasures to stray? whilst Satan, with hellish intent, suggests that we ought to obey. But trust not the father of lies. He tempts you with vanity's dream. His pleasure, when touched, quickly dies, like bubbles that dance on the stream. Look not on the wine when it glows, all ruddy in vessels of gold. At last it will sting your repose, and death at the bottom unfold. But, lo, in a natural night, pour suddenly down on the eye. The sun has withdrawn all his light, and rolls a black globe o'er the sky. And hark what a cry rent the air, immortal the terrible sound. The rocks split with horrible tear, and fearfully shakes all the ground. The dead from their slumbers awake, and leaving their mouldy domain, make poor guilty mortals to quake, as pallid they glide o'er the plain. Sure nature's own God is oppressed, and nature in agony cries. The sun in his mourning is dressed to tell the sad news through the skies. Yet surely some victories gained, important and novel and great, since death has his captives unchained and widely thrown open his gate. 
yes victory great as a god could gain over hell death and sin this moment's achieved by the blood of jesus our crucified king but all the dread conflict is o'er lo cloud after cloud rolls away and heaven serene as before breaks forth in the splendour of day and all the sweet landscape around emerged from the ocean of night with groves woods and villages crowned astonish and fill with delight but see where that crowd melts away three crosses sad spectacles show our guide has not led us astray heart this is the secret you'd know two thieves and a crucified god hangs awfully mangled between whilst fast from his veins spouting blood runs dying with purple the green behold the red flood rolls along and forming a basin below is termed in emmanuel's song the font for uncleanness and woe emerged in that precious tide the soul quickly loses its stains though deeper than crimson there died and scapes from its sorrows and pains this fountain is open for you go wash without money or price and instantly formed anew you'll lose all your woes in a trice then cease foolish heart to repine no stage is exempted from care if you would true happiness find tis on calvary seek for it there end of poem this recording is in the public domain winter night meditations of cottage poems this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by kathleen cottage poems by patrick bronte winter night meditations rude winters come the skies o'ercast the night is cold and loud the blast the mingling snow comes driving down fast whitening o'er the flinty ground severe their lots whose crazy sheds hang tottering o'er their trembling heads whilst blows through walls and chinky door the drifting snow across the floor where blinking embers scarcely glow and rushlight only serves to show what well may move the deepest sigh and force a tear from pity's eye you there may see a meagre pair worn out with labour grief and care whose naked babes in hungry mood complain of cold and cry for food whilst tears bedew the mother's cheek and sighs the father's grief bespeak for fire or raiment better board their dreary shed cannot afford will no kind hand confer relief and wipe away the tear of grief a little boon it well might spare would kindle joy dispel their care abate the rigour of the night and warm each heart achievement bright yea brighter far than such as grace the annals of a princely race where kings bestow a large domain but to receive as much again or e'en corrupt the purest laws or fan the breath of vain applause peace to the man who stoops his head to enter the most wretched shed who with his condescending smiles poor diffidence and awe beguiles till all encouraged soon disclose the different causes of their woes the moving tale dissolves his heart he liberally bestows a part of god's donation from above approving heaven in smiles of love looks on and through the shining skies the great recording angel flies the doors of mercy to unfold and write the deed in lines of gold there if a fruit of faith's fair tree to shine throughout eternity in honour of that sovereign dread who had no place to lay his head yet opened wide sweet mercy's door to all the desolate and poor who stung with guilt and hard oppressed grown to be with him and at rest now pent within the city wall they throng to theatre and hall where gesture look and words conspire to stain the mind the passion's fire whence sin polluted streams abound that whelm the country all around ah modesty should you be here close up the eye and stop the ear oppose your fan nor peep beneath and blushing shun their tainted breath here every rake exerts his art tea ensnare the unsuspecting heart 
the prostitute with faithless smiles remorseless plays her tricks and wiles her gesture bold and ogling eye obtrusive speech and pert reply and brazen front and stubborn tone show all her native virtues flown by her the thoughtless youth is ta'en impoverished disgraced or slain through her marriage vows are broke and hymen proves a galling yoke diseases come destructions dealt where'er her poisonous breath is felt whilst she poor wretch dies in the flame that runs through her polluted frame once she was gentle fair and kind to no seducing schemes inclined would blush to hear a smutty tale nor ever strolled o'er hill or dale but lived a sweet domestic maid to lend her aged parents aid and off they gazed and off they smiled on this their loved and only child they thought they might in her be blessed and she would see them laid at rest a blissome youth of courtly mien off called to see this rural queen his oily tongue and wily art soon gained maria's yielding heart the aged pair too like the youth and thought him not but love and truth the village feast at length is come maria by the youth's undone the youth is gone so is her fame and with it all her sense of shame and now she practises the art which snared her unsuspecting heart and vice with a progressive sway more hardened makes her every day averse to good and prone to ill and dexterous in seducing skill to look as if her eyes would melt to effect the love she never felt to half suppress the rising sigh mechanically to weep and cry to vow eternal truth and then to break her vow and vow again her ways are darkness death and hell remorse and shame and passions fell and short-lived joy with endless pain pursues her in a gloomy train o britain fair thou queen of isles nor hostile arms nor hostile wiles could ever shake thy solid throne but for thy sins thy sins alone can make thee stoop thy royal head and lay thee prostrate with the dead in vain colossal england mows with ponderous strength the yielding foes in vain fair scotia by her side with courage flushed and highland pride whirls her keen blade with horrid whistle and lops off heads like tops of thistle in vain brave erin famed afar the flaming thunderbolt of war profuse of life through blood does wade to lend her sister kingdom aid our conquering thunders vainly roar terrific round the gaelic shore profoundest statesmen vainly scheme tis all a vain delusive dream if treacherously within our breast we foster sin the deadly pest where sin abounds religion dies and virtue seeks her native skies chaste conscience hides for very shame and honors but an empty name then like a flood with fearful din a gloomy host comes pouring in first bribery with her golden shield leads smooth corruption o'er the field dissension wild with brandished spear and anarchy brings up the rear whilst care and sorrow grief and pain run howling o'er the bloody plain o thou whose power resistless fills the boundless whole avert those ills we richly merit purge away the sins which on our vitals prey protect with thine almighty shield our conquering arms by flood and field wheel round the time when peace shall smile o'er britain's highly favoured isle when all shall loud hosannas sing to thee the great eternal king but hark the bleak loud whistling wind its crushing blast recalls to mind the dangers of the troubled deep where with a fierce and thundering sweep the winds in wild distraction rave and push along the mountain wave with dreadful swell and hideous curl whilst hung aloft in giddy whirl or drop beneath the ocean's bed the leaky bark without a shred of rigging sweeps through danger's dread the flaring beacon points the way and fast the pump's loud clanking play it fails not hark with crashing rock she's shivered gainst the solid rock or by the fierce incessant waves is beaten to a thousand staves or bilging at her crazy side amidst the thundering hostile tide and down she sinks triumphant rave the winds and close her watery grave the merchant's care and toil are vain his hopes he buried in the main in vain the mother's tearful eye looks for its sole remaining joy in vain fair susan walks the shore and sighs for him she'll see no more 
for deep they lie in ocean's womb and fester in a watery tomb now from the frothy thundering main my meditations seek the plain where with a swift fantastic flight they scour the regions of the night free as the winds that wildly blow o'er hill and dale the blinding snow or through the woods their frolics play and whirling sweep the dusty way when summer shines with burning glare and sportive breezes skim the air and ocean's glassy breast is fanned to softest curl by zephyr bland but summer's gone and winter's here with iron sceptre rules the year beneath this dark and climid sky how many wanderers faint and die one flouncing o'er the treacherous snow sinks in the pit that yawns below another numbed with panting lift inhales the suffocating drift and creeping cold with stiffening force extends a third a pallid course thus death in very dreadful form triumphant rides along the storm with shocking scenes assails the sight and makes more sad the dismal night how bless the man whose lot is free from such distress and misery who sitting by his blazing fire is closely wrapped in warm attire whose sparkling glasses blush with wine of mirthful might and flavor fine whose house compact and strong defies the rigor of the angry skies the ruffling winds may blow their last and snows come driving on the blast and frost their icy morsels fling but all within is mild as spring how blessed is he blessed did i say e'en sorrow here oft finds its way the senses numbed by frequent use of criminal absurd abuse of heaven's blessings listless grow and life is but a dream of woe oft fostered on the lap of ease grow racking pain and foul disease and nervous whims a ghastly train inflicting more than corporal pain oft gold and shining pedigree prove only splendid misery the king who sits upon his throne and calls the kneeling world his own has oft of cares a greater load than he who feels his iron rod no state is free from care and pain where fiery passions get the rein or soft indulgence joined with ease begets a thousand ills to tease where fair religion heavenly maid has slighted still her offered aid her matchless power the will subdues and gives the judgment clearer views denies no source of real pleasure and yields us blessings out of measure our prospect brightens proves our stay december turns to smiling may conveys us to that peaceful shore by raging billows lashed no more where endless happiness remains and one eternal summer reigns end of winter night's meditations this recording is in the public domain verses sent to a lady on her birthday of cottage poems this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by kathleen cottage poems by patrick bronte verses sent to a lady on her birthday the joyous day illumes the sky that bids each care and sorrow fly to shades of endless night e'en frozen age thawed in the fires of social mirth fields young desires and tastes of fresh delight in thoughtful mood your parents dear whilst joy smiles through the starting tear give approbation due as each drinks deep in mirthful wine your rosy health and looks benign are sent to heaven for you but let me whisper lovely fair this joy may soon give place to care and sorrow cloud this day full soon your eyes of sparkling blue and velvet lips of scarlet hue discoloured may decay as bloody drops on virgin snows so vies the lily with the rose full on your dimpled cheek but ah the worm in lazy coil may soon prey on this putrid spoil or leap in loathsome freak fond wooers come with flattering tail and load with sighs the passing gale and love distracted rave but hark fair maid what e'er they say you're but a breathing mass of clay fast ripening for the grave behold how thievish time has been full eighteen summers you have seen and yet they seem a day 
whole years collected in time's glass in silent laughs how soon they pass and steal your life away the flying hour none can arrest nor yet recall one moment past and what more dread must seem is that to-morrow's not your own then haste and ere your life has flown the supple hours redeem attend with care to what i sing no time is ever on the wing none can its flight detain then like a pilgrim passing by take home this hint as time does fly all earthly things are vain let nothing here elate your breast nor for one moment break your rest in heavenly wisdom grow still keep your anchor fixed above where jesus reigns in boundless love and streams of pleasure flow so shall your life glide smoothly by without a tear without a sigh and purest joys will crown each birthday as the year revolves till this clay tenement dissolves and leaves the soul unbound then shall you land on canaan's shore where time and chance shall be no more and joy eternal reigns there mixing with the seraphs bright and dressed in robes of heavenly light you'll raise angelic strains end of verses sent to a lady on her birthday this recording is in the public domain the irish cabin from cottage poems by patrick bronte read for librivox dot org by oxenhandler should poverty modest and clean e'er please when presented to view should cabin on brown heath or green disclose aught engaging to you should erin's wild harp soothe the ear when touched by such fingers as mine then kindly attentive draw near and candidly ponder each line one day when december's keen breath arrested the sweet running rill and nature seemed frozen in death i thoughtfully strolled o'er the hill the mustering clouds wore a frown the mountains were covered with snow and winter his mantle of brown had spread o'er the landscape below thick rattling the footsteps were heard of peasants far down in the vale from lakes bogs and marshes debarred the wild fowl aloft on the gale loud gabbling and screaming were borne whilst thundering guns hailed the day and hares sought the thickest forlorn or wounded ran over the way no music was heard in the grove the blackbird and linnet and thrush and goldfinch and sweet cooing dove sat pensively mute in the bush the leaves that once wove a green shade lay withered in heaps on the ground chill winter through grove wood and glade spread sad desolation around but now the keen north wind gan whistle and gusty swept over the sky each hair frozen stood like a bristle and night thickened fast on the eye in swift wheeling eddies the snow fell mingling and drifting amain and soon all distinction laid low as whitening it covered the plain a light its pale ray faintly shot the snowflakes its splendor had shorn it came from a neighboring cot some called it the cabin of morn a neat irish cabin snow-proof well thatched had a good earthen floor one chimney in midst of the roof one window and one latched door escaped from the pitiless storm i entered the humble retreat compact was the building and warm its furniture simple and neat and now gentle reader approve the ardor that glowed in each breast as kindly our cottagers strove to cherish and welcome their guest the dame nimbly rose from her wheel and brushed off the powdery snow her daughter forsaking the reel ran briskly the cinders to blow the children who sat on the hearth leaped up without murmur or frown an oaken stool quickly brought forth and smilingly bade me sit down 
whilst grateful sensations of joy o'er all my fond bosom were poured resumed was each former employ and gay thrifty order restored the blaze flickered up to the crook the reel clicked again by the door the dame turned her wheel in the nook and frisked the sweet babes round the floor released from the toils of the barn his thrifty blithe wife hailed the sire and hanging his flail by her yarn he drew up his stool to the fire then smoothing his brow with his hand as if he would sweep away sorrow he says let us keep god's command and never take thought for the morrow brisk turning him round with a smile and freedom unblended by art and affable manners and style though simple that reached to my heart he said whilst with ardour he glowed kind sir we are poor yet we are blessed we are all in the steep narrow road that leads to the city of rest tis true i must toil all the day and oft suffer cold through the night though silvered all over with grey and dimly declining my sight and sometimes our raiment and food are scanty ah scanty indeed but all work together for good so in my blessed bible i read i also have seen in that book perhaps you can tell me the place how god on poor sinners does look in pity and gives them his grace yea gives them his grace in vast store sufficient to help them quite through though troubles should whelm them all o'er and sure this sweet promise is true yes true as the snow blows without and winds whistle keen through the air his grace can remove every doubt and chase the black gloom of despair it often supports my weak mind and wipes the salt tear from my eye it tells me that jesus is kind and died for such sinners as i i once rolled in wealth without grace but happiness ne'er was my lot till christ freely pitied my case and now i am blessed in a cot well knowing things earthly are vain their troubles ne'er puzzle my head convinced that to die will be gain i look on the grave as my bed i look on the grave as my bed where i'll sleep the swift hours away till waked from their slumbers the dead shall rise never more to decay then I, with my children and wife, shall get a bright palace above, and endlessly clothed with life, shall dwell in the Eden of love. Then no gentle stranger, though poor, we are cheerful, contented, and blessed. Though princes should pass by our door, King Jesus is ever our guest. We feel, and we taste, and we see the pleasures which flow from our Lord, and fearless, and wealthy, and free, we live on the joys of his word. He ceased, and a big tear of joy rolled glittering down to the ground, whilst all, having dropped their employ, were buried in silence profound. A sweet, solemn pause long ensued, each bosom o'erflowed with delight, then heavenly converse renewed beguiled the dull season of night we talked of the rough narrow way that leads to the kingdom of rest on pisgah we stood to survey the king in his holiness dressed even jesus the crucified king whose blood in rich crimson does flow clean washing the crimson of sin and rinsing it whiter than snow but later and later it's wearing and supper they cheerfully bring the mealy potato and herring, and water just fresh from the spring. They press and they smile, we sit down, first praying the Father of love, our table with blessings to crown, and feed us with bread from above. The wealthy and bloated may sneer, and sicken o'er luxury's dishes, and loath the poor cottagers cheer, and melt in the heat of their wishes. 
but luxury's sons are unblessed a prey to each giddy desire and hence where they never know rest they sink in unquenchable fire not so the poor cottager's lot who travels the zion ward road he's blessed in his neat little cot he's rich in the favour of god by faith he surmounts every wave that rolls on this sea of distress triumphant he dives in the grave to rise on the ocean of bliss now supper is o'er and we raise our prayers to the father of light and joyfully hymning his praise we lovingly bid a good night the ground's white the sky's cloudless blue the breeze flutters keen through the air the stars twinkle bright on my view as i to my mansion repair all peace my dear cottage be thine nor think that i'll treat you with scorn whoever reads verses of mine shall hear of the cabin of morn and had i but musical strains though humble and mean in your station you should smile whilst the world remains the pride of the fair irish nation in friendship fair erin you glow offended you quickly forgive your courage is known to each foe yet foes on your bounty might live some faults you however must own dissensions impetuous zeal and wild prodigality grown too big for your income and weal ah erin if you would be great and happy and wealthy and wise and trample your sorrows elate contend for our cottager's prize so error and vice shall decay and conquered add bliss to renown and you shall gleam brighter than day the gem of the fair british crown end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the Rev. J. Gilpin on his improved edition of The Pilgrim's Progress. From Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. When, Reverend Sir, your good design to clothe our pilgrims gravely fine, and give him gentler mien and gait, first reached my ear, his doubtful fate with dread suspense my mind depressed, awoke my fears and broke my rest, Yet still had England said, You're free, choose whom you will, dear sir, To thee for dress beseeming modest worth, I would have led our pilgrim forth. But when I viewed him o'er and o'er, And scrutinized the weeds he wore, And marked his mien, and marked his gait, And saw him trample sin elate, And heard him speak, though coarse and plain, His mighty truths in nervous strain, I could not gain my own consent, to your acknowledged good intent. I had my fears, lest honest John, when he beheld his polished son, if saints aught our earthly know, would take him for some Bond Street beau, or for that thing, it wants a name, devoid of truth, of sense, and shame, which smooths its chin and licks its lip, and mounts the pulpit with a skip then turning round its pretty face to smite each fair one in the place relaxes half to vacant smile and aims with trope and polished style and lisp affected to portray its silly self in colours gay its fusty moral stuff to unload and preach itself and not its god thus wishing doubting trembling led i oped your book your pilgrim read as rising phoebus lights the skies and fading night before him flies till darkness to his cave is hurled and golden day has gilt the world nor vapour cloud nor mist is seen to solely all the pure serene so as i read each modest line increasing light began to shine my cloudy fears and doubts gave way till all around shone heaven's own day and when I closed the book, thought I should Bunyan leave his throne on high, he'd own the kindness you have done, to Christian, his orphan son, and smiling as one Eden smiled, would thus address his holy child. 
my son ere i removed thee hence i spared not labor nor expense to gain for you the heavenly prize and teach you to make others wise but still though inward worth was thine you lay a diamond in the mine and you wanted outward polish bright uh, to show your pure intrinsic light some knew your worth and seized the prize and now are throned in the skies whilst others swilled with folly's wine but trod the pearl like the swine in ignorance sunk in their grave and thence where burning oceans lave now polished bright your native flame and inward worth are still the same a flaming diamond still you glow in brighter hues than cheery go more suited by a skilful hand to do your father's high command fit ornament for sage or clown or beggar's rags or kingly crown end of poem this recording is in the public domain the cottage maid from cottage poems by patrick bronte read for leverbox.org by kathleen moore aloft on the brow of a mountain and hard by a clear running fountain in neat little cot content with her lot retired there lives a sweet maiden her father is dead and her brother and now she alone with her mother will spin on her wheel and sew knit and reel and cheerfully work for their living to gossip she never will roam she loves and she stays at her home unless when a neighbor in sickness does labor then kindly she pays her a visit with bible she stands by her bed and when some blessed passage is read in prayer and in praises her sweet voice she raises to him who for sinners once died well versed in her bible is she her language is artless and free imparting pure joy that never can cloy and smoothing the pillow of death to novels and plays not inclined nor aught that can sully her mind temptations may shower unmoved as a tower she quenches the fiery arrows she dresses as plain as the lily that modestly glows in the valley and never will go to play dance or show she calls them the engines of satan with tears in her eyes she oft says away with your dances and plays the ills that perplex the half of our sex are owing to you satan's engines released from her daily employment intent upon solid enjoyment her time she won't idle but reads in her bible and books that divinely enlighten whilst others at wake dance and play chide life's restless moments away and ruin their souls in pleasure she rolls the foretaste of heavenly joys her soul is refined by her lord she shines in the truths of his word each christian grace shines full in her face and heightens the glow of her charms one day as i passed o'er the mountain she sung by a clear crystal fountain nor knew i was near her notes charmed my ear and thus she melodiously chanted oh when will we see our dear jesus his presence from poverty frees us and bright from his face the rays of his grace beam purging transgression for ever oh when shall we see our dear jesus his presence from sorrow will ease us when up to the sky with angels we fly, then farewell all sorrow for ever. Come quickly, come quickly, Lord Jesus, thy presence alone can appease us, for I on thy breast believers shall rest, where blessed they shall praise thee for ever. Oh, had you but seen this sweet maiden, she smiled like the flowers of Eden, and raised to the skies her fond beaming eyes, and sighed to be with her redeemer while thus she stood heavenly musing and sometimes her bible perusing came over the way all silvered with gray a crippled and aged poor woman her visage was sallow and thin through her rags peeped her sunburnt skin 
with sorrow oppressed she held to her breast an infant all pallid with hunger half breathless by climbing the mountain she tremblingly stood by the fountain and begged that our maid would lend her some aid and pity both her and her infant our maiden had naught but her earning her heart with soft pity was yearning she drooped like a lily bedewed in the valley whilst tears fell in pearly showers with air unaffected and winning to cover them of her own spinning her apron of blue though handsome and new she gave and led them to her cottage all peace my dear maiden be thine your manners and looks are divine on earth you shall rest in heaven be blessed and shine like an angel for ever more blessed than the king on the throne is he who shall call you his own the ruby with you compared fades to blue its price is but dust on the balance religion makes beauty enchanting and even where beauty is wanting the temper and mind religion refined will shine through the veil with sweet luster end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Spider and the Fly from Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronta Read for LibriVox.org by J.L. Baldwin The sun shines bright, the morning's fair, The gossamers float on the air, The dew-gems twinkle in the glare, The spider's loom is closely plied With artful care, even in my room. See how she moves in zigzag line And draws along her silken twine, Too soft for touch, for sight too fine, nicely cementing and makes her polished drapery shine the edge indenting her silken ware is gaily spread and now she weaves herself a bed where hiding all but just her head she watching lies for moths or gnats entangled spread or buzzing flies you cunning pest why forward dare so near to lay your bloody snare but you to kingly courts repair with fell design and spread with kindred courtiers there entangling twine. Ah, silly fly, will you advance? I see you in the sunbeam dance, attracted by the silken glance in that dread loom, or blindly led by fatal chance to meet your doom. Ah, think not, tis the velvet flue of hair or rabbit tempts your view, or silken threads of dazzling hue to ease your wing. The foaming savage couched for you is on the spring entangled freed and yet again you touch tis o'er that plaintive strain that mournful buzz that struggle vain proclaim your doom up to the murderous den your tain your bloody tomb so thoughtless youths will trifling play with dangers on their giddy way or madly err an open day through passion's fell and fall the worn it oft a prey to death and hell but hark the fluttering leafy trees proclaim the gently swelling breeze whilst through my window by degrees its breathings play the spider's web all tattered flees like thought away thus worldlings lean on broken props and idly weave their cobweb hopes and hang o'er hell by spider's ropes whilst sins enthrall affliction blows their joy elopes and down they fall end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Epistle to a Clergyman from Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 my youthful brother, oft I long to write to you in prose or song, with no pretense to judgment strong, but warm affection, may truest friendship rivet long, our close connection. With deference what I impart, receive with humble, grateful heart, nor proudly from my counsel start, I only lend it. A friend ne'er aims a poisoned dart, he wounds to mend it. 
a graduate you've just been made and lately passed the mitred head i trust by the blessed spirit led and shepherd's care and not a wolf in sheepskin clad as numbers are the greatest office you sustain for love of souls and not of gain through your neglect should one be slain the scriptures say your careless hands his blood will stain on the last day but if pure truths like virgin snows you loud proclaim to friends and foes consoling those deterring those to heaven you'll fly though stubborn sinners still oppose and graceless die ezekiel thirty three eight nine divide the word of truth aright show jesus in a saving light proclaim to all their dead outright till grace restore them the great redeemer full in sight keep still before them dare not like some to mince the matter nor dazzling tropes and figures scatter nor coarsely speak nor basely flatter nor groveling go but plain truths as life's pure water pellucid flow the sinner level with the dead the lamb exalt the church's head his holiness adoring spread with godly zeal enforce though sinless how he bled for sinners weal portray how god in thunder spoke his fiery law whilst curling smoke in terror fierce from sinai broke midst raging flame then jesus milder blood invoke and preach his name remember still to fear the lord to live as well as preach his word and wield the gospel's two-edged sword though dangerous lower example only can afford to precept power and dress nor slovenly nor gay nor sternly act nor trifling play still keep the golden middle way whate'er betide you and ne'er through giddy pleasures stray though fools deride you as wily serpent ever prove yet harmless as the turtle dove still winning souls by guileful love ephesians two one to eight and deep invention so once the great apostle strove with good intention and in lie to thyself take heed oft prove your heart its pages read self-knowledge will in time of need your wants supply who knows himself from dangers freed where'er he lie so god will own the labors done approving see his honored son an honored law the numbers one of souls immortal through grace will onward conquering run to heaven's bright portal and on that last and greatest day when heaven and earth shall pass away a perfect band in bright array will form your crown your joys triumphant wide display and sorrows drown and now farewell my youthful friend excuse these lines in candor penned to me as freely counsel lend with zeal as fervent for you will pray till life does end your humble servant end of poem this recording is in the public domain Epistle to the Laboring Poor of Cottage Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte. Epistle to the Laboring Poor. All you who turn the sturdy soil, or ply the loom with daily toil, and lowly on through life turmoil for a scanty fare attend and gather richest spoil to soothe your care i write with tender feeling heart then kindly read what i impart tis freely penned devoid of art in homely style tis meant to ward off satan's dart and show his guile i write to ope your sin-closed eyes and make you great and rich and wise and give you peace when trials rise and sorrows gloom i write to fit you for the skies on day of doom 
what though you dwell in lowly cot and share through life a humble lot some thousands wealth and fame have got yet no no rest they build pull down and scheme and plot and die unblessed your mean attire and scanty fare are doubtless springs of bitter care expose you blushing trembling bare to haughty scorn yet murmur not in black despair nor weep forlorn you see that lordling glittering ride in all the pomp of wealth and pride with lady lolling at his side and train attendant tis all when felt and fairly tried but care resplendent as riches grow his wants increase his passions burn and gnaw his peace ambition foams like raging seas and breaks the rain excess produces pale disease and racking pain compared with him thrice happy you though small your stock your wants are few each wild desire your toil subdue and sweeten rest remove all fancied ills from view and calm your breast your labors give the coarsest food a relish sweet and cleanse the blood make cheerful health in springtide flood incessant boil and seldom restless thoughts obtrude on daily toil those relish least who proudly own rich groves and parks familiar grown and gazing stranger passing on enjoys them most the toy possessed the pleasures flown for ever lost then grateful let each murmur die and joyous wipe the tearful eye erect a palace in the sky be rich in grace loathe this vain world and longing sigh for jesu's face both rich and poor who serve not god but live in sin averse to good rejecting christ's atoning blood midst hellish shoals shall welter in that fiery flood which hissing rolls but all who worship god aright in christ his son and image bright with minds illumined by gospel light shall find the way that leads to bliss and take their flight to heavenly day there rich and poor and high and low nor sin nor pain nor sorrow know there christ with one eternal glow gives life and light there streams of pleasure ever flow and pure delight christ says to all with sin oppressed come here and taste of heavenly rest receive me as your friendly guest into your cots in me you shall be rich and blessed though mean your lots behold my hands my feet my side all crimsoned with the bloody tide for you i wept and bled and died and rose again and throned at my father's side now plead amain repent and enter mercy's door and though you dwell in cots obscure all guilty ragged hungry poor i give in love a crown of gold and pardon sure to each above then hear the kind inviting voice believing in the lord rejoice your souls will him the happy choice to god on high whilst joyful angels swell the noise throughout the sky a fond farewell each cottage friend to jesus love i would commend your souls and bodies to the end of life's rough way then death subdued May you ascend to endless day. End of poem. Cottager's Hymn from Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte, read for LibriVox.org by Jenny Scott, October 29, 2015. The Cottager's Hymn. One. Stanza. My food is but spare and humble my cot yet jesus dwells there and blesses my lot though thinly i'm clad and tempests oft roll he's raiment and bread and drink to my soul two stanza his presence is wealth his grace is a treasure his promise is health and joy out of measure his word is my rest his spirit my guide in him I am blessed, whatever betide. 3. 
Stanza Since Jesus is mine, adieu to all sorrow, I ne'er shall repine, nor think of to-morrow. The lily so fair, and raven so black, He nurses with care, then how shall I lack? 4. Stanza Each promise is sure, that shines in his word, And tells me, though poor, I'm rich in my Lord. Hence, sorrow and fear, since Jesus is nigh, I'll dry up each tear, and stifle each sigh. 5. Stanza Though prince, duke, or lord, ne'er enter my shed, King Jesus, my board, with dainties does spread. Since he is my guest, for joy I shall sing, And ever be blessed in Jesus, my King. 6. Stanza With horrible din, afflictions may swell, They cleanse me from sin, they save me from hell. They're all but the rod of Jesus in love, They lead me to God and blessings above. 7. Stanza Through sickness and pain I flee to my Lord, Sweet comfort to gain and health from his word. Bleak scarcities raise a keener desire To feed on his grace and wear his attire. 8. Stanza The trials which frown, applied by his blood, But plate me a crown and work for my good. In praise I shall tell, when throned in my rest, The things which befell were always the best. 9. Stanza Whatever is hid shall burst on my sight, When hence I have fled to glorious light. Should chastements lower, then let me resign. Should kindnesses shower, let gratitude shine. 10. Stanza Hence, sorrow and fear, Since Jesus is nigh, I'll dry up each tear, And stifle each sigh, And clothed in his word, Will conquer my foes, And follow my Lord, Wherever he goes. 11. Stanza My friends, let us fly, To Jesus our King, And still as we high, Of grace let us sing, Through pleasure and pain, If faithful we prove, For cots we shall gain, A palace above. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Cottage Poems by Patrick Bronte